Hey everyone, welcome back. We are into week four and we're going to start the transition phase with a four week program on anticipation or target panic, but we mostly going to call it anticipation because that's basically what it is. It's not really a panic, it's a more natural thing. I think that's the way we should see it. And this is all about the transition phase. And the transition phase is all about incorporating all this new way of thinking into our shooting and daily practice so let's head into week four and i'll tell you what the transition phase is all about so this is all about fine tuning so we're going to go back to the way we were practicing and we're going to keep our fingers on what we're feeling and what's happening in our minds and if we feel anxiety we're going to make fine adjustments or just avoid some things for a while just so that we are wiring our brain into shooting a proper shot that's very important is not to practice bad habits if you feel something is off or it's making it worse something is making your anticipation worse cut it and rather go practice something that doesn't give you that anxiety for now at least and we need to remember the combo of three that needs to be in place at the same time to give you your anxiety that is your bow needs to be at full draw your pin needs to be on the target or close and your shot has to be about to go off so in other words your finger needs to be on the trigger you you've reached your click into your hinge release all those three combined that is what makes you anxious now if you are shooting at home and you're not feeling it anymore, there are triggers in the outside world and also the competition and also even when you practice, that's going to make it worse. And it might bring out the anxiety where you didn't feel it when you were practicing in normal conditions. Triggers will be, for example, wind. It will be timers at a competition. It will be pressure, obviously, like a big buck walking in on elk that's gonna set you off into doing things that you don't do at home and also expectation if you really really want something bad your mind might sabotage that you know it's like a weird thing that our minds do that you want to get out of that situation so the more you want it you know the more uncomfortable it's going to get so there are other triggers that you might feel you're going to feel it for yourself um, that's a lot of things like Small things like mag magnification, size, you know, your dot size, uh, distance, how far you're shooting. You know, so there's a lot of minor and major triggers that's going to that's gonna influence your shot. The transition phase is all about this, is managing that. And also finding out where your weakness lies and then you have to work harder on it. So you're going to have to work harder to control yourself under those conditions. And you can test these, you know, you can have a subtle... Um, test you can have your friend watching you shoot you can have your wife watching you shoot that all makes a difference you know it's like j instead of just going straight out to the competition line rather let someone watch you put a camera up that also has an effect on you and see how you feel you know if you don't feel anything you're probably fine uh if the competition gets really tough then you might see that something might happen that you didn't expect but this method of letting someone watch you shoot is a good method of just easing into it so when we practice now we're going to play with a few things and you're going to kind of feel your way around it like i said we're going to make fine adjustments firstly you're going to do it to your equipment if uh, you feel that something is not 100 percent right you know like a few uh, things that makes a lot of difference is your poundage of your bow or your holding weight that i found influences me a lot so if I hold a lot in the back, I feel I have to rush a shot. So you can play with that and you can adjust accordingly and adjust your bow down if you want. You know, it's like there's no need to shoot 70 or 80 pounds. If you feel more comfortable on 60 or 50, shoot it there. You know, if, it, if you're a better shot with that poundage, that's where you should be at. Or at least build it up back to 70 pounds then, especially if it makes you anxious. Draw length has also a big influence. A lot of people shoot too long. They also shoot too short. A lot of hunters shoot too long. They chase speed and then you will see a lot of times your sight your pin will move very slow in your mind you might think it's a good thing 
But the problem with that is it also takes a long time to get back. And then when the wind blows, you know, by the time you get back, it's already out again. And that also might make you anxious. And also overall, a, a long draw length is also not, you know, you get a lot of face contact. And besides that, it's due with your pin movement. There's not a lot of control. Too short is not good either. And you see your pin moves a lot, you know, like too quickly. Then also you might want to le lengthen it. You, you want a sweet spot. And also if you feel too short, you know, it might cause injury. But, you know, I lean on the shorter side, but that's just for me. It's not, it doesn't work for everyone. You know, I like a medium. I think I measure 30.75 that I'm supposed to shoot. I shoot more in the 30 range. So I shoot about three quarters of an inch shorter than I should be. But that's just a ballpark anyway. So I feel that if I get too long, I'm out of control and I don't like it. If I'm too short, it feels like, you know, I'm tense and I can't, and I can't shoot relaxed shots. But if I have to choose, I'll be on the shorter side if, you know, then too long for me personally. You can also play with stabilizers. If, it, if it's too heavy, your bow, then you might get anxious to get the shot off because you're going to get tired. Play with stabilizers, maybe take some weight off and just watch that pin jump around, move around and shoot a good shot and see how your grouping is. But if it's too heavy and you like, you know, getting stuck below the target, you're definitely going to want to make your bow lighter. You know, it's going to help you get that bow up, even though it's mental. But if you have it too heavy, it's going to make it far worse to get up anyway. And then also maybe add some back weight and just to help you get that bow up, just mentally. You can play with your releases, play with different releases, play with release adjustments like your hinge. You know, you can, if it takes too long to, to get it off, maybe, you know, like try and set it faster. Even though a lot of times when it's, when, it, when you fear the release going off, you want to make it slower and actually will go off easier because you're not you're not on that knife edge of it wanting to go off and you're just breaking it you like holding onto that release for dear life because you know any movement will let it go off that's also not a good mind space to be in you want it to be able to work through the shot to get it off your dot size is also very important for the way you see your sight move if it's small it's going to look like it's moving faster so if you don't like that make it a little bit bigger and you'll see it actually looks like it's going to go slower and magnification also has a big influence on how much your sight movement or perceived movement is. The more magnification there is, the more your sight's going to move around. So, you know, like I said the last time as well, if you feel this creeping in and you feel anxiety when you see that pin move, take it out for a while, shoot it like that, or go to a smaller magnification, you can play with that. Also, remember, clarifiers also influence the size of your magnification so the stronger the clarifier the weaker it makes your magnification on your scope and also the harder it is to see your pin it actually makes it smaller or it makes it dimmer or less visible so just keep that in mind as well so all this influences your shooting as well and remember we're gonna most importantly we're gonna keep an eye on our mental aspect of our shooting all this equipment adjustments makes a difference to our mental game but it's important for you to keep your finger on where you're at and how you're feeling. And if you're feeling anxiety or, you know, you feel problems are creeping in, you either need to go back to the shot trainer or you need to do something with your bow to help you so that you feel less anxiety and you don't practice bad habits. And remember, follow your shot process. If you feel any red flag coming up, let down, don't practice losing, don't practice shooting bad arrows you know let it down don't give your mind opportunity to run that auto program you know just stay in control the more the pressure is the harder it's going to be for you to stay in control we're going to add pressure and all the elements in this transition phase slowly and see how you cope with it so try this for a, a week or two and then see how your shooting goes and this is going to be a program that you might need to follow for the rest of your shooting career um, is a, not a bad idea because you don't want that anxiety in your shooting and you need to see it before it creeps in and you need to keep your finger on your mental state when you're shooting and work at it it's always going to be a work in progress right because remember our minds are designed to protect us this is nothing weird or new or whatever that's just how our minds work you're going to need to stay in control and work around it and work through it and we appreciate all the viewers and all the feedback 
and it's awesome to have you guys on board with us and we'll see you with the next video coming out soon thank you guys